Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second talk of this morning, uh, which is to be given by Dr. Albert Lin, Lin Ximen. <clears throat> and Dr. Lin is no stranger to us because he, he was graduated from National Central University. Uh, he got his PhD here. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he did his undergrad, if I remember correctly, from Tsinghua before he uh, went to NCU. And uh, after, after his PhD degree, um, he went to Michigan uh, uh, shortly um, to work on the dark energy te uh, telescope program. I, I forgot how many years, almost because time flies, almost like a four or five years now already. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost five years. Yes, yes, it's time flies so fast. And uh, uh, so, but I, I, I think that he has been working on on the uh, Neptune children. I, mean, I don't understand why, <laughs> but <laughs> somehow he got into that, which is a very interesting thing. And he might also tell you that later on that he got some, some time, right, on, on the JWST. And uh, so it's a great, uh, you know, great compliment to his work. Okay, Eric, please go ahead. So I will talk about the Neptune children. A major is using this, this study using the, the ground based observation. So that star with the Kuiper belt, so which I don't have to explain that because the previous talk is very nice. So Kuiper belt is, uh, yeah, we know we have a lot of the premium object there. And Pluto is the biggest one. So the interesting thing is that those premium objects actually can be scattered around in the solar system. So the one is the quite well acceptable accept model is that this planet migration actually through this uh, planetesimal uh, everywhere in the solar system. So some of them is scattered away, but some of them has been captured around this uh, planet orbit. So that's the children, right? So. Um, so we know this children is orbiting around the planet and the biggest population is Julian children and the Neptune children. So they somehow capture into the Lassen orbit with the planet. Um, let me see if I can show you. Can you see this? Yes. Yeah, so this is the the, so the purple thing is the sun, right? So this is Ju Jupiter. So the Juvian children is this blue dot. And we have the hill dot, which is a uh, two to three resonant with Jupiter. So those things, the, the children is one to one. So those things have somehow been portrayed by the Jupiter. So it's not loose. So they have this stable orbit. And we have, so that's the blue dot is a Neptune children. And the, the orange dot is the object with the orbit similar to Pluto. So we call that Putino. So Putino is three to two resonance with Neptune. So it has been um, portrayed by this resonance. So this, um, this model I show you currently, this is not quite um, realistic. So it's somehow more like this. So the yellow, uh, the, the, the orange dot is the Putino and the blue is the children. Yep, so they probably capture the planetesimal from Kaberville, which means that these uh, children, no, no matter it's Julian children, Neptune children, they could be quite similar to the Kaberville object. So there's a new mission, it's already launched. So it's fly to, to, to Jubian Trojan. So if you see this NASA page, you will see that we state that the Trojan is quite, it's a very primordial material, right? So it's uh, resemble those funding in the Kaberville object. 
So, which means if we study these Jovian children, we probably also study the most primordial thing in the solar system. So this uh, loose emission, it fly through several different children in the L5 and L4. But the, the problem is that um, is this children is really the same or similar thing with the, the Kuiper Bell object or the TNOs, the trans object. So from some observation result, it could be, uh, for example, this is, um, this show the, the size distribution. So if we will want to compare two things that are similar or not, we will say, well, it's uh, the same size or not. So this uh, size distributions tell you that if they are, have similar size or not. So this uh, cumulative distribution, which means that how many things is bigger than what, what kind of size. So we find that this um, half population of TNO actually have quite similar size distribution with the Jovian children, which is nice. So they could be really linked together linked to each other. However, um, one thing you compare the similarity, you can say the size, if they are the same size or not. And you can, you can also ask if they have the same colors or not. But the, the, the problem is that they somehow have different color with Kuiper Bell. Um, for example, this uh, Jovian children, Neptune children, they do have similar B minus R colors. But if you compare centaur or scattered disk HBO, you will see the lack a part of the greater color things. So for this from, from this right plot, right panel plot, you can also see that the dark, the gray dark is the, the scattered disk object. So the separate, so the scattered disk object somehow distribute everywhere in this region. But the, with the color dot is the Neptune Trojans. Most of them is in this uh, blue part, and it's only one in very red. So they somehow show that their color distribution is different. So that's uh, evident to against this children could be come from Kaiberville because they don't show the same color. It's easy to explain for the Jovian children, right? Because it's more, much closer to a sun, so the color could change by the heat. But Neptune children is far away, 30 AU is not closer than, um, I mean, it's not, not, not closer than the cover bell much, object much, but they still have different color. So that's a problem. Um, but if we see this um, different color, this only one ultra red colored Neptune children is somehow in a very high incarnation space. So maybe that means something. And the other thing about the Neptune children is that uh, we found that this, um, so, so that's the, the orbital, Incentricity and the incarnation, they somehow have a 10, it's somehow correlated with their size, so the absolute magnitude. So this uh, small absolute, absolute magnitude means it's bigger. So it's somehow bigger thing have smaller incentricity and the smaller thing have larger incentricity. It's not so obvious on the incarnation is is because that the incarnation is more biased from the observation because we on, we usually don't look for tall sky right we only look for some low incarnations to search the object so it's somehow more biased but the incentricity is all small so it's not so much bias it's kind of the so so this uh, kind of uh, correlation is strange and. So to study that, we can try to remove the survey bias. So that's the apparent things. But if we remove the survey bias, we can see the intrinsic, the real distribution of the eccentricity and incarnation. 
So we have so we have sample from the OSIS. It's a survey focused on the low latitude region. And also PANSTAR is more three pi survey. And they both find several neptune children. So if we remove this uh, bias, so it's not an uh, easy plot to, 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 to read, but I can try to explain that. For example, we can, we, we can this uh, orange dot is the observation, so the real detections. So we can make the cumulative distribution of these uh, real things. So for example, this panel show the pen star detection. So you can, we can start cumulating. So the highest incarnation found by pen star is 22. So it's here. And for the OSIS, the highest found is about 30. And we can generate a model of this uh, children with some incarnation distribution. And then we pull that into survey simulation. So that simulate the survey bias. So the intrinsic model I put in is this uh, green light. And after simulation, because we have the survey bias, so it's toward a little bit lower. So for a successful model, we will expect that this uh, simulation result will match the observation result. So for example, this one is somehow okay. But what I found is that if I'm trying to match the OSIS result, I cannot match the pen stars one. If I'm trying to match the pen stars, which have lower incarnation distribution, I cannot match the OSIS one. So, so that's the problem that it seems a single incarnation distribution somehow difficult to explain the two different survey result. So what I did is that I put two components so there are two different uh, incarnation model. So some of the objects have low incarnation model and some of the objects have higher and I can somehow explain the observation result. So it's the same thing for the eccentricity. You can see that I cannot match these two with one model, but with two component model, I can do that. But for the, the other things, I, I don't have to do that. So that's the vibration amplitude. So it's mean how this uh, children vibrates away from the center of the Lagrange point. So the, the so I don't have to use two different vibration amplitude to describe these things. So the two component is somehow shown in the orbital parameters. So one way to explain that is because we know the pen star have wider survey area, so less incarnation bias. And but but it's somehow shallower. The OSIS go deeper, but they have quite restraint on the low incarnation, low, low, low latitude. So one thing to explain that is that we somehow have uh, bigger things and, and the smaller things. And the smaller thing is somehow hotter. So they have higher incarnation and higher eccentricity. The bigger thing which pen star can detect is somehow colder. So we observe this range, right? So the pen star get this uh, blue thing more and the OSS get this red thing, hotter things more. Then we will somehow generate these two population. So from the survey, previous survey, we know that, well, we have, we currently have 30 children. Most of them are only the L4. The reason is not mean they are asymmetry. It's some is mean that in the previous 10 years, when we can start survey for the KBO and the small uh, distance things, this L5 children is just on the uh, galactic center, which is difficult to search. So we don't find many is because it's difficult to search. So, but we got about 30 L4 object. And so from this search and the survey, we know that there are roughly about 150 L4 children. It's bigger than 50 kilometer diameter. 
So let's actually means that the Neptune children with last size is 2.5 times more than the Julian children at the same size range. So that <laughs> the total population could be much more than the Julian children. And we talked that before the size distribution of Neptune children and Julian children, both they could very similar to the TNO, which suppose they are come from the same the same place, right? But the color is different, so that somehow against they come from the same population, the same the same origin. And the odd thing is these uh, two components. So it's why we have these two components. All these two components just a uh, small simple statistic is still unknown. Um, so that's currently we know from the current data we have. But we can start building some scenario to explain all of these uh, current known fakes. Uh, first, the color is different, right? So there is uh, this plan that, well, they just don't come from the same place, right? So they, should, they could have different colors. But that, that's, that, that somehow, they somehow throw one unknown to explain the unknown, right? So we, so now we don't know where these children come from. Um, but there is a different thing can explain. So if we have, if this plantasmal have two different colors, and they have a boundary just between 30 to 40 AU. And then this uh, natural migrate and capture this thing into Trojan and other resonance. They can somehow create a small part of the ray object and allow these blue things. So the model is like this. If we have blue plantasmal here and the red plantasmal out, outside, and then we migrate this uh, planet and they capture into resonance. So you can see the blue thing is captured more and red thing is captured less. And for the 30 AU, which is a children place, you can see we have much more blue thing than the dash red things. So that probably can explain why we have different color distribution compared with the other capable object. And that's explaining color. The alternative way to explain that is through this uh, uh, Trojan and the Putino collision. So that's interesting. So we know this uh, Trojan somehow spend my, much wider incarnation than the Putino. So the Trojan and Putino, if we, um, so the Trojan and Putino actually they meet in, in, in around 30 AU because Putino have this uh, perihelion distance less than 30 AU. So they do collide, they, they could public, public collide. But if this um, high incarnation Trojan, because they are much higher than the, than the Putino, so they have less chance to collide with Putino. So maybe those racing can be protected because the racing is, can be, after collision, the ray surface could gone, become more brutal. So if they can be protected by their incarnation, they can, we can keep this racing in the high incarnation. That somehow is explain why we have this uh, racing in the 30 degree incarnation. So that's another explanation. So, So other than the color, can we both, can we have a model to both explain why we have two components also have different color? So one possibility is that we, the, the children actually come from two different uh, sources. For example, this model by, by the Kafka. 
So the model is that we have the real primordial children before the Neptune migrate, and we have outer planetesimal disk, and then this Neptune migrate, so they destroy this original um, primordial Neptune children, but they somehow some of the object can be recaptured by Neptune, and Neptune also capture the outer disk, outer planetesimal disk object, so they have two different origin. And if these two different origins have different colors and different size distribution and different initial incarnation distribution, they can somehow explain why we have two components. For example, if this uh, original population is colder, they have a very thin disk and then have just been recaptured, they still keep this uh, lower incarnation and the outer disk may be thicker so once they recapture, it will be much wider than the recapture the than the re recapture population. So that can explain why we have the two different uh, incarnation distribution and the incentricity in distribution. And the last scenario is that well, maybe maybe we see a lot of the low incarnation, low incentricity thing, because those things actually correlated. So maybe a small part of this uh, cold thing, they actually a collision of family. So the collision of family will keep the, will keep their orbital, ele orbital elements similar. For example, this one, Homea family in the Kuiper Belt, you can see that they share a very similar orbit. And the most interesting thing is that if you uncertain collisional condition, you can avoid to create a very small size of the small size fragment of the family. So for example, this paper talking that we don't find a small number of the Pomea family. So they think there is uh, that the collision is not this direct hit, is somehow hit in the side, and then it's somehow more gentle to create a fragment. So that will, that will prevent the fragment too small. So if that's true, it's also explain why we don't see, why, why, this, um, why this distribution is color, is, is size dependence, right? because this uh, blue coda distribution is a family, collisional family, and they don't generate a small part of the member. So that could explain everything actually. And the collisional family have similar color, but we don't know which scenario is correct. So how can we do that? So we know that there are some um, consequence from those scenario. For example, if they are come from the, 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 the children is from different origin, well, we think this uh, color should be symmetry between L4 and L5. So if they, the, if you explain that the color, the, the, the small red colors, because there is a boundary of the primordial color, primordial color between 40 to 30 to 40 AU, you also um, you also think it should be symmetry between L4 and L5. And this, uh, oh, sorry. So this, um, this collision between Neptune children and the, and the Putino is also a symmetry effect. And if they capture from different uh, sources, they also symmetry, and it's it's not only sim but it could be all, only symmetry on the components. So which means the L four and L five both have two dynamical components. One is hotter, one is colder. And the last scenario will be asymmetry because well. It, because the, the asteroid family is only in one side. We are not sure another side will have the same 
asteroid family. Even if they have, they could in different uh, orbital parameter space. So looks like if we test this symmetry asymmetry, the key is that finding more L5 children, right? Because we only have three, so we cannot do anything to compare the populations. So that's is that's a diagram of summary of this. So if um, so, we have five scenario. So we can try to search the L five. So if we did not find any expand number of discovery, which means this this L four and L five is too asymmetric. We probably need some new scenario to explain why this L4 and L5 number are too asymmetry. But if we find some number, we can say, well, if they have two components, if not, the some of the scenario can be rejected, right? And then we can see the color if they have full ultra ray or not. So if we do not find a lot of ultra ray since which means the common origin and the, the, the disk color since can, the scenario can be rejected. So they only remain the scenario five, which is the collational family. So we can somehow test the, this model using this diagram. And the key is to survey the L5 children. So now fortunately the L5 is somehow moving out. So we can, uh, select the field is not too close to the galactic center. It's a little bit far away. And it's, it's somehow interesting. The field is close to the new horizons field. So the new horizons flies through this uh, black diamond. So we can somehow put the field is more close to these black diamonds and search the Neptune children. Also the, the possible flight by target for the new horizons or the distant observation targets, not necessarily the flyby target. Anyway, so the problem is that how can you, we know we have about 30 in L4. So how can we get this um, as much target as we need in the very short term? So first we have to use a wide field camera so that's the dark energy cam. And with some big and a telescope, it's four meters. And if, so we can calculate that. So I assume that the L5 have the same population with the L4. So we currently have five, right? So we, we probably need to get something around 10 to guess to, to have another statistic. So, what we can do is that we have to go deep to 26.5. So we, we have a four, four meter telescope, right? So you can calculate that. If you like to go to 26.5 with a four meter telescope, you have to integrate. The total exposure time need to be four hours. So we cannot, get a single exposure for four hours, but we have some trick to do. So first is that we need to clean out the big one stars. So that's one of the Neptune children fields. So there are a lot of stars because they are still close to galactic plan, but it's somehow much better than before. <clears throat> and after differential image, it can be very clean. Right, so there's only three sources remain from this. So this one is a fake source I put in into an image for the calibration. This one I think is an asteroid. <clears throat> and this is a cosmic ray here. So the asteroid, before you do the imagery defensing is here, which is looks very dark. But after the diffusion images become brighter, so then we can, we're cutting out the, the image, right? So we can start to stack them together, but because this object is moving, so we have to shift a little bit and then stack. So we have to shift each frame. 
So by shift how much they can be calculated. So this uh, black cone is the any possible physical ring, physical rate of the slow moving object. And the Neptune children somehow moving around this uh, four hours second per hour. So we can create this cone, it's all physical possible solar system object. And then we can, we can somehow fall in this with the grid. So that's the each red dot is a way we have to shift and stack. So we can shift and stay with, with that rate. So you can see here, we shift and stay with a different rate. And with the correct moving rate, you will find the, uh, the, the slow moving object here. But if the rate is off, you will get an elongate and low signal to noise source. So we can try to search this uh, bright dot. So once we have this uh, bright dot detected, we can, this is the same cone of the rate, right? So we can start from our detection and trying to maximize the, the signal to noise of the sources. So we can run the Markov chain. So that will through this uh, I ray and deck ray space, and it will eventually go to the maximum SNR place. So that is very likely the base rate of the object. So around the base rate, you can you can shift and stack with the dig with, with a with a grid. So you you will see this uh, nice uh, radio pattern. And then, so that's the best stack. And you can check with the differential co-ed. There's nothing strange here. So that's the, this is a real, this should be a real slow moving object. And this is another one with the lowest signal to noise ratio. So you can see that the co-ed image is a lot of stars. The differential image is removed off then. And then we have the detections and you can also see this uh, rig, uh, radio patterns. So it's also a real sense. And this is even though a signal to noise, although this very clean the differential image, but, um, but the signal is, is somehow less than the previous two. Uh, we still see some radio pattern. I was saying this still real but it depends on different people. Some people will more conservative for these things. Anyway, so we can shift and stack hundreds of objects. It's uh, three to four hours, it's partial. And then we can go deep to, well, in the, in the base case, you can go deep to 27 magnitude with a four meter telescope. Uh, LS is 26.5 of Fenton and 26 is all possible. So with this trick, we can, we can start to, to explore this L5 children, but um, except from the new survey, we can also using the data we already have to study the L4 more completely. For example, we have the, now this uh, dark energy survey has all finished for the six years. So with the all six years data, the dark energy survey already discovered 600 new KBOs. So they include 10 uh, Neptune children's. So from our previous study, we only use part of the data and we got four and we can study the population, but now we have 10. So we should be do much better uh, population study for the L4. And so that's less tricky than the L5 survey because we have to, to do a lot for, for shift and stack, but this is more direct. We have the object, we can just run the survey simulation and we can re re uh, reconstruct, reconstruct the population. And also 
we can also study the known children with their rotation rate because we say we, we will try to understand if these children are similar to the TNO. So one fundamental property of that is the rotation property. So um, for example, we know this uh, TNO have the, the rotation rate distribution like this blue histogram. It somehow occurs to a Maxwellian distribution. And then we observe for several, several known brighter, bright and bright Neptune children. And I got this uh, green and the uh, orange histogram. So the, the, the orange histogram is only show the object uh, and quite sure the rotation period is correct. The green one is mean the object we have we include the object need more data, but this uh, preliminary results show that they somehow have quite different rotation rate distribution. So the Neptune children somehow rotate slower than the typical transnaplanar object. So I'm not sure why, but that's that probably tell us some collisional result. So they are somehow in different equivalents and the, the Neptune children is somehow what is slower. So that's also easy to up to, to do. It's much easier than shift and stack. We just need a telescope to monitor in these uh, rotation properties. And another thing need to be done is that the colors, so we have more Neptune children now. And the, the Neptune children we got color is only the bigger one. So maybe this, uh, if this uh, mm, traditional family scenario is real, we somehow have the bias to upset the color because we only upset the bigger one and bigger one is a family member and then family have the same color. So they are all in this blue part. So if we can start to observe these uh, smaller children and they could have very similar color distribution with the TNOs. So it's which we did here. So we are using this 6.5 meter telescope to observe the even smaller uh, Neptune children. And the preliminary results show that somehow these children have color distribute everywhere. So it's even many radar objects show up. So uh, we are still working on that to confirm the color are all correct. So the finally, the ZWST spectrum. So this uh, proposed, so this successful proposal is proposed by the graduate student, uh, Louisa McWork. So, um, so she planned to observe nine Neptune children using the ZWST to see their infrared spectrum. So that will be the direct compare of the surface property of Neptune children and the other population of the solar system, especially the, 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 the TNO and Kuiper Bell object. So the cool thing of this, uh, um, near infrared instrument is near space. And I don't know how to pronounce this. So it's an IFU, it, it has an IFU. So you can get the image and for, for, for this, uh, each pixel is actually a spectrum. So we can get the image of the, the Neptune children and their spectrum at once. So, and also this JWST have very good resolution and this IFU also have 0.1 R second resolution for this one pixel. So if this Neptune children is turned out to be a binary, we probably can resolve that from this uh, instrument and we can get the spectrum from these two components. So I think that will be very cool. Okay, so this uh, a lot of work cannot be done by me only. So we have a wonderful group. 
So especially we have two graduate students, it's Luisa and Kevin. So Kevin is working on this all shift and stack things, which is works excellent. And Luisa is doing these uh, observations. So she got this Magellan color and also the ZWST uh, proposal. So yeah, without them, uh, we cannot do, do many of this. So that's a short summary. So for the past few years, we know this Neptune Trojan population is kind of odd. So the color is not like the proposed uh, origin, which is a TNO. And also it shows all these strange possible two components on this uh, orbital space, orbital parameter space. But it can be explained by some wide scenario. The problem is that we currently cannot test those scenario because this scenario is, this scenario can be test using this uh, symmetry, but because we know so few L5 children, so we cannot test that. But for now we have the technique and the, the data to doing so. So we can, we, we already start our survey um, on the L5 and we expect, so, so we can go down to 26. And once the survey was done and the object be retrieved, we, we expect we will discover about 10. So let's make the statistic um, enough to compare with L4 population. And also the dark energy survey is complete and the data has completely search, has completed search. So we can create a more complete L4 natural children model. And we have more complete survey on the natural children color, including smaller size object. And there's no one doing this uh, rotation property for the natural children before, and we are doing that now. And also the finally, uh, we have the we will have the first uh, near near infrared space one for the Neptune children this uh, summer. So I think that's all of my talk. Thank you. Uh, Eva, <clears throat> thank you so much. Is that all? Do you have more to say? <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. You had, you have done a lot of work and. Um... Yeah, actually, the student do more work than me. But well, just writing a proposal, you know, getting you know data. Is, you know. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm happy that you're learning the trick. <laughs> um, any questions? I mean, the before I asked one or two. Any question from the audience? I think this is a, it's a big uh, complicated analysis because, uh, uh, as I ever said, uh, there are still several you know, possible scenarios. And uh, it's not easy to, you know, there's so little data, so it's not easy to, to sort things out. But the one thing I want to ask you is that um, you said that <clears throat> you think you would be able to discover 10 uh, L5 children. Yes. And how, how did you make the estimate? I mean, okay, I mean so you, have to, so you have to assume a certain size distribution and so on, right? Right, so I, so I copy this L4 population on mm. L5. So I assume that everything are all the same. So I can estimate how many objects can be detected from one uh, dark energy can pointing. So it's roughly it's roughly 1.5 per, per, per one pointing. It depends on the latitude. So if we point on the low latitude, you will get more and high latitude will be a little bit less. So it's also, so it's model dependence. It's dependent on how, how wide of this uh, incarnation distribution. Yeah, there's one thing, but the other thing is that, um, as you may have said that um, L4 is a kind of biased because there's a collision of family. Yes, yeah. so yeah, so, so yeah, so I, it's cool that possibility. So I use the, single component model to, 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 to generate this uh, estimation. So it's very rough estimation because we, we somehow know not much. 
So I think that the 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 number to to be used perhaps is the is the the range, you know, low limit, upper limit. You might be able to detect. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, and then using the low limit, and you say the low limit is ten, and then you you are confident that you get you know good results. Mm -hmm. If the upper limit is ten, of course, you know, there's danger that you may not get enough data either. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we have we have complete two field on the low latitude. Mm -hmm. and we somehow get about dozen of the candidates. So the candidates mean that they have current um, they have current distance about thirty AU. Mm -hmm. So they could be they could be Putino because we are not sure. So we have to follow them up this, uh, this summer. Mm. Actually two weeks later, so I have to follow them. Um, so I think with one year's, one more observation, we should be able to solve them out to see if they are real Neptune children or, or they just the Putino. Okay, good. Uh, Casey, Casey has a, has a question. Casey, please. Um, yes, um, I have a comment or two. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put my video on. Um, my, J my space telescope colleagues say the near spec, if you wanted to know how to pronounce the instrument. Yeah, near spec. Um, but the comment I had was, Will Grundy of the New Horizons team, my colleague, always likes to point out to us that Neptune stopped at about 30 AU, and it must have stopped for a reason. There, mm -hmm. there, there wasn't anything more for it to keep assimilating and keep migrating. So he always points out to us that we have to be careful about thinking about, there could also have been compositional as well as density differences about 38, just like you're saying. And the other thing I would point out is that I think Wong and Brown have done some really nice papers in Mojube uh, arguing that uh, hydrogen sulfide is a volatile that would be stable. If you look at the curves I was showing, would be stable in the outer Kuiper belt, but not stable in the inner. And that could possibly give you color differences. And if you took an outer one where it was stable and brought it in, it would dissipate. So you might have some volatility color change differences to think about. Yeah. But I think this uh, the volatile material is H2S, right? Yes. Yeah, I think the new scenario is say that because one half of this uh, surface of the Neptune children, like the Jubian children, I think. So he somehow did not find these things. So I think that scenario is not bad anymore. Okay. But yeah. um, I, I still have to I'll just bring back Will's, Will's comment. Something happened at 30 AU. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's And maybe mind. you're finding the evidence for that. Maybe Neptune stopped yeah. for a reason and ate and was. Yeah eating or, or digesting or, or accreting and grabbing different kinds of KBOs before it stopped. Um, another, another question I have uh, uh, ever is that, what do you think you can get out of the rotational period uh, distribution? I mean, you spend a lot of time trying to determine the rotation periods. Of course, this is something that you must do, you know, but on the hand, you want to divide what, uh, the density or, or something? Well, I, I would like to know the density is one of them, right? But it's somehow you can only get the, um, you can somehow find this, the, the spin limit, right? But that will request a lot of ob objects. Uh, we don't have that many. We have only six currently. Um, so I think we can get the, the spin rate distribution like this plot. So I, I currently I am not sure how this means, right? They somehow <laughs> they have they have different spin rate distribution, but what does that mean for the yeah, for the Neptune children and for, for other TNOs. I think it could be, it, it means that they somehow in different uh, collisional equivalents or other effects. So, well, you yeah, might, might sure. go, you know, Rick's, Rick's, uh, Rick's has a recent paper on, the, I think, using also 
OSSO uh, to derive yeah, the, the fossil, uh, I think it's fossil, right? So so yeah, I, I read a paper. They have mm -hmm. there are two papers. One is the Juvian children. Mm -hmm. So he finds a spin limit for the Juvian children and also the heel does. Mm -hmm. I think the interesting thing is that he found that the, the spin limit of the children and heel are different. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, so if that's true, that's that's interesting. So this uh, children and heal that, right? So the one scenario is, is that they somehow capture at the same time, right? So this heal and children could be the same things physically. But if the spin limit is different, means that they have different density. It could be, I'm, I'm not sure, but it could mean they are somehow from different origin. Yeah, so I, I, so I start this uh, rotation uh, project is that I also think if I can find the different rotation limit of the, I, I can find a rotation limit of Neptune children that would be cool, right? You can compare that with the Juvian children with the Neptune, with the, the trans object. But it somehow turned out that they rotate slower which mean they, they won't reach the limit. Mm. Yeah, or, or they have very, very low density, which is not realistic. So I, yeah, I still not sure why it's that means, but they, they somehow means they could be have quite different evolution history, I think. Okay, um, any other questions or comments uh, to, to this very interesting talk by Ed? I mean, then now you can see. I have one. Oh yeah, please do. Okay, so so hello. When you calculate the estimate the, the, the size distribution, you must assume you should must assume the, the sound the albedo, right? Yeah. So yes. so when 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 you when the, the you but but you in your Neptune Neptune children, your your color seems to be like. A uh, very uh, distribute uh, wide distribution. So, why do you do this uh, a bit of assumption? So, yeah, so it's actually only one children have different colors. So, I just assume that all of them have the a bit of 0 0.05. But okay. that's uh, last for the size distribution. But how we really did is the edge distribution. But if you, you assume that they all have the same albedo, so that's that's become the size distribution. Yeah. So it's here. Okay, I think that the Zhong Yi, you you might want to uh, discuss with uh, Edward, you know, later on, uh, because the time, you know, we are two minutes to, to the next talk. Um, Ed, uh, thank you so much. You know, I'm happy that you now have built a, a large team you know, around you. And, uh, and uh, I expect you to write, to write a lot of papers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, uh, so we would, uh, we would, um, we would uh, say, say, say goodbye to you for now. Uh,